at uh, we'll bring Cornelia on board and we'll do a little recap and reflect um, on uh, where we are with GitOps and uh, and where how these uh, last couple of days have been. I uh, threw some notes in on slides, just like we did yesterday. And like we said, right after this, we'll have our staff and wonderful people who brought this uh, event together and some of our speakers to come say uh, bye on a goodbye slide. Um, so thanks, uh, Cornelia. Try, try to make sure I didn't lose you in my view. There you are. I'm I'm still here. I think yes, you're there. It zoomed in a little funny thing. But uh, thanks everybody. Thanks to the staff who put this together. Thanks for everybody who attended. It's so great to see all the active conversation in Slack, um, as well as a lot of the, um, my, my Twitter has just been blowing up with a lot of people retweeting and liking stuff. Um, but really um, it's such a great place to be, to be able to see all these fantastic speakers and all the technologies represented and um, from all over the world too. <laughs> a lot of people in, in later time zones, so they, they stuck around for America's time zone event. So thank you so much. And we really appreciate um, all that you brought to, to bring this uh, great event together. So with that, I wanted to kind of review, if any of you, we wanted to make sure we had a recap that was there for people who, um, you know, maybe you were busy working and you just couldn't, couldn't make it. Um, of course, we have the recordings. We'll have them sitting for a little bit and then Stacy will be diligently editing and creating playlists uh, from that. But I thought we'd recap and uh, if we could go to the next slide. Yeah, I thought um, we had a recap yesterday, sort of looking at the various focus areas. Um, and today I felt like looking at the whole event together, it's really, um, we really are, in a midstream of this journey to GitOps. Um, it was good to reflect on the past. And I was telling Cornelia, I don't have a crystal ball. It's great to hear people like uh, Justin Cormack say what he wishes he'll see in the next five years. But I thought maybe we'd kick off a little bit. Um, Cornelia, you were able to start today with such a fantastic panel. I was just saying, I wish we'd put more time uh, added to it, but I think it's just the beginning that we'll have many more of these types of discussions with these fantastic uh, speakers like um, Keith and, and Sneha, like sharing their different perspectives. But yeah, Cornelia, if you wouldn't mind kind of looking back and reflecting on your the panel itself and your thoughts from that panel of yeah. uh, where we are with where, what we had in the past, and in some ways, maybe it was partially its journey to get ups, but why in many ways it wasn't get ups. Yeah, you know, I, uh, first of all, I thought the panel was great. And the thing that's so great about panels is you don't know exactly where they're going to go. Um, if you, you have some idea, you have some plan, some storyline, um, which I think can kind of form a, a core and a basis, but then the, the brilliance just happens in the serendipity of the moment. And, uh, so I agree with you. I think that the panel um, kind of reflecting back on the past and noting that the goals of infrastructure as code were very, very similar, are, are, are very similar, almost identical to the goals that we are aspiring to with GitOps. And that GitOps is really just kind of an evolution of that, um, I, think is, I think was one of the things that came out of the panel so significantly. But reflecting on kind of the that overall this the several days, I mean, I started I, I started the whole event yesterday reflecting on the past, looking at what we had done kind of with software engineering in the past and where the inflection point was there. And then, as you said, Justin Cormack did something similar. Paul Roberts, just an hour ago, did something similar. Always looking back on what are the challenges, what are the problems that we've been trying to solve for some time. And there's this optimism that I felt across all of those different talks that something's different now. These problems that we've been trying to solve for quite some time, there's a new ingredient. There's a new ingredient that's going to help us make a really significant difference, not just a, a little tiny step forward, but a, a, a significant step forward. And that's what it felt like to me. And the other thing that I liked about the panel, which was also kind of similar to some of the things that we saw with like the GitOps maturity model yesterday, was this very pragmatic approach of, hey, we have some things that are working to some degree. We want to make them better, but we're not going to desert those things. We're going to make our way there incrementally. So it's the past, but then slowly incrementing towards a little bit more modern now. Definitely. And um that sort of leads to sort of this event and um, being part of this present. 
I was saying, you know, there are many technologies <laughs> in some ways. I'll, I'll put it out there like, right, there isn't one that's that's really dominating. Of course, we're very excited about our own Weave GitOps as a company that's being able to be in the middle of this and be able to be um, so engaged with um, fantastic companies that are um, adopting GitOps and trying to understand what GitOps means for them. So I think we've, uh, we're innovating from a place of that great visibility. Um, and I'll be honest, that's part of the reason I love working at WeaveWorks. We are known for our innovation. I'm so excited we attracted people like you, Cornelia, to join us. <laughs> you know, and it's now been, what, it's a year and a quarter? I can't remember now. I'm losing track yeah, Almost of time. a year and a half. Year yeah. and a half, yes. Yeah. And, you know, just the, the, the innovation that you have brought as well here. I mean, um, you know, I think that it's, it's such an exciting place. It's exciting to see where we're going to go. Um, and and you, as you reflected a little bit, right, we, we did accept these different talks that in a lot of ways seem like on the surface, they might be similar that they're comparing the technologies, but I was really excited to accept them because, you know, like Paul's or um, this morning's, you know, there's um, these different ones where they're coming from different perspectives, different use cases, different needs. So it's not just like every talk where you're comparing the technology is exactly the same. They are very different. And that's why I was like, excited to kind of pace them out throughout the day and see, you know, starting with Victor in the morning and ending with Paul and then others in the middle. I think that there were some great, great comparisons and people, um, a lot of people having their own clients. So thinking about their clients in mind. So it was really great to see that. Um, so with that, the future, um, what what do you feel reflecting on these two days? You know, for me, yeah. I put in parentheses use cases, use cases, use cases, use cases. You know, thinking about like I really um, not to like pride our own, but you know, Paul Curtis is so great, and it's just I just really was sitting there yesterday. Ah, oh, such a great talk on ML ops, and so clear, right? So clear what you have to think about, and so clear just pragmatically what you need to be thinking about, like with storage, if you're going to be thinking about GitOps. And there's um, you know so many more. Of course, like Katie was talking about Edge, so like, what, what do you think? I mean, just considering how much has changed the last 12 months, how, what is your personal crystal ball? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I agree that across the talks that we saw, particularly today, all the different use cases, all the different kind of perspectives of use of these various technologies and tools. Um, what I think that reflects is a whole bunch of creative people figuring out those patterns, figuring out what the best practices are and figuring out what is new and different here. Um, and, uh, and I was, you know, again, reflecting a little bit on the past and, and, and now kind of looking towards the future. I am quite certain, and I wasn't super active in this community, but I'm thinking maybe 15, 20 years ago, when people first started automating things like automatic tests, during the, you know, during the software development life cycle, um, and then some of the other automation, I'm sure that there were things like scripts that were put in place and a whole host of variable technologies. But there wasn't this overarching pattern, but there is now, and we call that CI. And so if we look across this relatively mature, you know, space, where we have things like Circle CI and GitHub Actions and Jenkins and all of those things. What has emerged is this, there is in fact a CI platform now. And we're starting to see, so GitOps, of course, we also talked a little bit about the, the, the paradigm of GitOps and what the principles of them were. We talked about the, the GitOps working group, which is something that cr got created since last year this time. Um, and I was super excited to see Harry just now talk about infrastructure as code, going back to how we kicked off the day this morning, going back to infrastructure as code and saying infrastructure as code, we need to add something else to it, which what he was talking about was he was adding to it the notion of convergence. He was adding to it this convergent pattern. So these concepts of convergence and what GitOps is are definitely solidifying. And so what I think we're seeing now and where we are, we, we're, we're at the begin, begin, beginning of the future. And I mean that somewhat dramatically, not just obviously, but I mean it somewhat dramatically in that I feel like the inflection point that we talked about when we kicked off the event yesterday, to a large extent, that inflection point is that 
GitOps is moving from being just a whole bunch of technology that is being applied by creative innovators or you know, really early innovators. And what we, we, what we did yesterday when we announced Weave GitOps is we announced a GitOps platform. So there came a time where CI platforms emerged. Well, that time is now. So it's, it's not just GitOps as a technology, but we have a GitOps platform that allows you to interact with GitOps in a first-class setting, in a first-class way. And so now, again, reflecting back to a couple of talks, Justin Cormack talked about a number of things. He talked about the fact that we don't want machines and humans writing into the same branches in the Git repository. Well, that right there is a super interesting kind of area for us to figure out what the patterns are and build those out in this GitOps platform. And then this morning, um, uh, our panelists also chimed in with, hey, we need multiple environments and we need scale along different clouds and different axes. And so we now have something in which we can start to bring these patterns in a very regular way. And that's what I think the future is. I think that we, we've hit that inflection point and we have to. And in fact, you had uh, suggested that I kind of go back to this slide, which is yes. to say, you know what? The future is that we have crossed the chasm and now we need to serve that, that segment that's in the green on this slide. We need to serve that segment and make it consumable by the masses. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, you know, I, I put on the slide as well to talk about this is you know, GitOps at scale, right? It just was, yeah. um, I had reflected earlier today, like thinking about this even 12 months ago, we had some major companies, you know, we had some people, but it really did feel like an event where they were talking to, you know, they were kind of these, these, these rare enterprise companies, yep. but fairly rare, like talking from the future to our very hungry audience that, you know, was just filling tons of questions in Slack and there's a lot of lively discussion. And, and that was just really, um, and, you know, and then I focus the topic as well, right? On like, I, I see that you're here because you're very excited, but you're saying, a lot of people are saying, I need help to convince my management. I need to help to convince my stakeholders. And I, I kind of need help to convince either my team or some, you know, um, teams that we work with ab about some of the concerns of, of the changes that have come. And it just feels like just in 12 months, I'm sure there's plenty of people who are still on that journey. And you know, we still have the GitOps conversation kit out there um, for you to, to, um, to, to help you on your journey there. But you know, just the, the types of companies that have stepped up and, and wanted to speak and share their stories uh, yesterday and today just shows like we really are here. We're not maybe in the middle of the green, but we're definitely in a place where oh, yeah. um, you know, these companies are, are, are well past um, kind of being from the future and, and sharing that they're, they're still in the middle of trying to work things out. I mean, they've really, really adopted. Um, and in that, I'm gonna actually just take the moment to, to plug here that um, as I've mentioned, for those of you who've been using Flux, you know, we have been working with companies uh, to help them migrate to the latest version of Flux. So um, I put it in the Slack channel and I'll um, post it again, but um, State Farm was one of the companies, um, a, a couple of others. And again, when, when I say we're helping them to get to the latest version of Flux, it's our team, you know, my developer experience team is involved, but we're very much representing the CNCF for those. Or, and you know, you'll see if you fill out the form, we're representing CNCF, we're rep representing this, the Flux project to, um, to both, you know, get help people move through and get a lot of the feedback that we wanted to get to improve the docs. Um, but to, in that process, we're able to see just the maturity level of these types of companies, you know, how they're thinking about GitOps, like where they, where they want it to be happening, how they're organizing themselves across teams to make that happen. It was um, very, very exciting. The types of people who showed up at the migration workshop across different teams, right? And the level of questions they're asking, they're really thinking about GitOps across where they have it right now and where they want to take it. So yes, it's very exciting. Um, on that, I don't know, Cornelia, did you have any final thoughts about uh, GitOps at scale? Because uh, as I would mentioned, it wasn't just the companies talking about it, but you know, the cloud providers understanding that, that that's where they want to, that's where they want to insert themselves, right? That's where they want to provide these offerings so that people don't have to be tentative about GitOps. They know that 
there is a whole industry and ecosystem out there making sure that this is going to happen well. Um, we'll yeah, one, one of the things that I always like to point out when we start thinking about GitOps at scale is whatever axis, whatever trajectory you're thinking about moving to scale. So for a lot of people, it is the number of Kubernetes environments, the number of clusters. Um, that's only one area that you're going to ultimately need to scale in is the number of clusters or the number of namespaces, the number of environments. It's also going to scale along axes of the number of applications or the number of teams that are using this or the number of specific locations where you're going to be running those assets. So we heard Katie talking about edge, right? So there's going to be scale along the different um, edge locations. And then we also have seen, of course, um, this morning, we saw Sneha talking about the number of clouds and those types of things. And so what we wanna do here is we wanna offer a consistent model. And the GitOps, the, the great thing about GitOps is it's a, it's a model that applies consistently across all of those axes. It isn't just restricted to the number of workloads. It's all of these other things, and we talked about that at the end of the day yesterday, which is you can apply GitOps to all the things. And so it's scaling on lots of different dimensions um, that is super interesting. Definitely. And with that, of course, we have to wrap up with we've GitOps, right? We're very excited. I'm glad that you uh, were out there demoing. And we want to make sure, yes, it really is. It's not only uh, the easiest way to get started with GitOps, but it really, we're working to build. It's the easiest way to GitOps, right? It's really the easiest um, kind of platform that we're building out. And of course, like, you know, for me, what I've mentioned many times, what's exciting for me is that it's built on Flux, right? Like we definitely have done our work. We're in the CNCF. Like I said, we're getting close to graduation. We're going through those st steps. So like we have amazing people that we get to work with, not only in the company, but in the community to make Flux what it is, you know, especially the latest version is just really fantastic. And it's just so exciting to see this, the, the energy in, in the Slack channels talking about Flux. So of course, to build Weave GitOps on top of that, it's just really, it's the most trusted uh, base that you can um, imagine to have um, a, a, a product that will put out there for a wide range of users. And so we're really, really excited about that. Um, Cornelia, did you want to say any last things before I call out the calls, the action on how people get started with Weave GitOps? No, please. <laughs> okay. So as we've shown, right, we, we have our product page. It is open source and free. So please try out Weave GitOps. Um, here's the link. You can take a screenshot. We also obviously have it in the Slack channels. And we do have a Slack channel now, which is Weave GitOps in our um, Weaveworks community Slack. So please make sure to go there. When you go through the steps, if you get stuck, if you have questions, please ask us. And we'll be kicking off our, um, we have our Weave user group, the meetup group that's been around now for years. And we'll be kicking off on Tuesday, um, a session where we can walk you through it again. Um, please get your laptops ready, come join us. Um, let us know if you've already gotten stuck somewhere, you know, we, we wanna find out, or if you're not stuck at all, or you wanna just get started, we wanna make sure that we go through it and uh, you know, make sure our docs and guides and that more use cases are um, being addressed in the docs. So please sh uh, show up for that and we'd love to see you there.